Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be finding the area of a polar graph. Specifically, what we're going to do is find the area in between the loops of the limousine given by 2 plus 4 sine theta. In order to find that area, we must first find what angle measures form the inner loop. Since the inner loop has a point at the pole, what we're going to do is set our equation equal to 0 and solve for our angle measure. So we have 0 equals 2 plus 4 sine theta or negative 2 equals 4 sine theta, which means the sine of theta is negative 1 half. So that means that our angle measures must be at 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. So between the angles of 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, we have our inner loop. So when we're looking at our graph, and we're going to start off here where our angle measure is 0. So we have the ordered pair of 2, 0. And then we're going to follow around our graph, going to pi over 2, following our angle measures. Here we're at pi, and then we come here to the pole at 7 pi over 6. Then we're going to keep going around this way to 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 3, and then back to 11 pi over 6. And then we're getting back over here, which will be at 2 pi again, or 0, same angle measure. So if we find this area of the inner loop, we should be able to find the area of the shaded region by finding the area of the outer loop and subtracting the two. Okay, let's look at this in rectangular form. So we have the equation f of x equals 2 plus 4 sine x. Notice that we have zeros at negative pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. In between the negative pi over 6 and the 7 pi over 6, we form the outer loop and in between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 we form the inner loop. When we're on the um, between the values of negative pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6 we have positive y values which gives us positive radius lengths on our polar graph. When we're on the inner loop we're below the x-axis and when we're looking at our equation that means that we have negative y values. Converting to polar form this just means that we have negative radius lengths, which is causing that inner loop to overlap the same area as the outer, outer loop on our polar grid. Remember, when we are using the area formula for polar graphs, which is the 1 half times the radius length squared, or f at theta squared, d theta, what we're really doing is adding up the area of numerous little sectors that all start with a point at the pole and go to the graph. So you have all these numerous sectors that you're adding up. So when we're looking here at the outer sector and we, um, um, sorry, the outer loop and we have all these little sectors that we're adding up, they're all overlapping the inner loop. Then when we go to the inner loop, we're getting all these little sectors. So if we take this area, subtract it from this larger area, we should be able to get the area in between the um, loops. Now, notice that I only chose half of the graph. I'm just going to take half and double it because this graph has symmetry with respect to line theta equal pi over 2. So I can take a little bit easier formula um, by taking only half the graph. Okay, let's take a look at how we form those areas again. I have a point here that's very close to the pole and I've got a sector connected to it, or sorry, a segment uh, connected to it forming all these sectors that we were talking about. So if you kind of think about it this way as this line segment being dragged along um, the graph holding steady at the pole, then you can fill in all this area that we have in question. And we're going, in this case, we started at zero and we're going all the way to pi over 2. So um, when we do that, we get all this area here. Now here, we're starting off at the pole, and we're going all the way around to 3 pi over 2. But remember, that point at the pole was at 7 pi over 6. So we have that one. This one actually started, see this would be a 0 degree angle here, but we wanted to get all this area down here as well. So we had to start at negative pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. In this case, we're starting 
um, are integral at negative pi over 6. And then we're going to go increasing to pi over 2 and get that entire area. Okay, so we're going to set up our integral for the outer loop starting at negative pi over 6, which is going to be it, where we have marked 11 pi over 6. And then we're going to increase up to pi over 2. Then for the inner loop, we're going to integrate from the 7 pi over 6 coming in this way, looping around to 11 pi over 6. Um, but we're only going to take half of it, so we're going to stop at 3 halves pi. So to get the area in between the loops, we're just going to subtract those two areas. Okay, so starting with our formula and plugging in our equation. So we have 2 plus 4 sine theta. These are going to both be worked exactly the same way, so we're going to do them at the same time. And then we're doubling both those areas because we're only integrating half of the area. And then we'll simplify a little bit. So the 2 times 1 half becomes 1, and then I filled out the 2 plus 4 sine theta and did that on both of them. Then I factored out a 4 on both of them. And now we want to integrate. So we have a sine squared theta, so I rewrote that using the power reducing formula to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. And that's done on both of them as well. Then what we want to do is divide the 2 into the 4, so that gives us 2 minus 2 cosine 2 theta. And then combining the constants, we have 3 plus 4 sine theta minus 2 cosine 2 theta. And now we're ready to integrate. So the 3 becomes 3 theta. The integral of the sine is the negative cosine, so we had to change our sine there. Uh, for cosine 2 theta, we have an adjustment of 1 half, so 1 half times 2 became 1 sine 2 theta. And again, did that on both of them. Now I distributed the 4's, so we end up with 12 theta minus 16 cosine theta minus 4 sine 2 theta. And we're ready to go ahead and plug in our endpoints of integration. Using the pi over 2, we just plotted, um, plugged that in, and then subtracted out the negative pi over 6 being plugged in, so the signs are changing here. And then subtracted that for the other one, which is 3 pi over 2 and 7 pi over 6 being plugged in. Then I just evaluated, so the 12 times pi over 2 became 6 pi. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and the sine of essentially pi is 0. Then we have uh, negative times a negative here became positive uh, 2 pi. And then the cosine of negative pi over 6 is positive square root of 3 over 2. And this will become negative pi over 3, so the sine of that is negative square root of 3 over 2. For the second integral, we have um, this becomes 18 pi. Then the cosine of 3 halves pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi is 0. This reduces down to 14 pi. The cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2, so we have that. And this becomes 7 pi over 3, so the sign of that is also um, but the positive of square root of 3 over 2. Then just combining like terms, we end up, um, for the first integral, 8 pi plus 6 square root of 3. And for the second, we have 4 pi minus 8 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 3, or 4 pi minus 6 square root of 3. And they're going to be subtracted, so we end up with 4 pi plus 12 square root of 3 for our exact answer for this um, area, which is approximately 33.35 units squared. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.